a video from the Insecticide Resistance Action Committee. The Tutamatwood Leaf Miner, Tuta absoluta, is a pest of great economic importance in several countries in Latin America and the Mediterranean Basin. In tomato, it attacks all plant parts and stages and can cause up to 100% crop destruction. Each female may lay up to 300 creamy eggs and 10 to 12 generations can be produced each year. Larvae feed within the leaf, causing damage and mining symptoms. ARAC method number 22 has been developed for baseline susceptibility and resistance monitoring for tuta absoluta. Before starting the bioassay, it's important to have healthy tomato leaves that are not contaminated with insecticides or other compounds that may affect the results. In order to keep the leaves in good condition while handling and preparing them for the bioassay, they should be kept in contact with a wet paper towel. In this example, the technician starts collecting leaves from the top third of the plant, uses a plastic tray lined with paper towel and sprays water on it to keep the leaves fresh. At the end, the tray is covered with a further moist sheet of towel. We recommend to use second larval instar, the offspring from field collected insects. The leaves infested with larvae should be prepared prior to the beginning of the test and ideally several hours or even the day before. This is to allow the leaves to start wilting, which causes the larvae to come out of the mines and start moving on the surface of the leaves. This facilitates selection of the larvae of the right size, 4 to 5 millimetres, from the infested leaves. The test should be done with a solution of the formulated product. Additional information about the solution preparation is contained in the IRAC Method 22 description. All vials to be used should be clearly identified with visible labels. In order to standardise leaf damage evaluations, it's important to choose leaflets of a similar size. Ideally, leaflets should be cut into leaf discs with a standard leaf area of around 2.5 cm diameter or 4.91 square centimetres. Each leaf disc should be dipped for 3 seconds, swirling gently to make sure that the whole leaf area is well covered. Leaf discs should be treated one by one, then placed to dry on the wire mesh tray with their upper surface facing up. This must be done in a well ventilated room so that the leaves dry as fast as possible. Trays should be marked with labels according to the treatments they will be assigned to. In each tray cell, wet the paper towel to ensure that the leaf disc will not wilt and will remain in good condition for the duration of the bioassay. Remove any excess water from each tray cell. Place the leaf discs in the cells making sure that each disc goes into a properly labelled cell. Larvae must be carefully selected to make sure that they are of the proper size as previously shown and that they react normally and actively to probing. Size must be uniform because sensitivity to the insecticide changes with size, which correlates with instar. A fine hair paintbrush could be used to transfer the larvae from the infested leaves to the cell trays, taking care not to hurt the larvae. Each prepared cell should only receive one larvae. Once larvae are in the cells, trays should be closed, making sure that the larvae are not damaged in the process. Trays should be kept at a constant 25 plus or minus 1 degrees C for 3 days or 72 hours. After 72 hours, trays are taken from the incubator, cells are open, the leaf disc is removed with forceps and both the leaf disc and the cell are carefully inspected to find the larvae. Often, it's necessary to open a leaf mine to be able to find the larvae and be able to inspect its condition. A stereo microscope could be used for this procedure as it facilitates visualising the condition of live versus moribund larvae and also because dead larvae will often desiccate to a much smaller size than the initial 4 to 6 millimetres. Live larvae are normal looking larvae, like the control larvae, with substantial growth in relation to the original size and usually associated with a significantly mined or damaged leaf disc. Moribund larvae have a lack of coordinated movements when gently stimulated with a needle or forceps. These larvae show symptoms that indicate they have been affected by the insecticide and may die soon. This type of evaluation is important for ingestion insecticides that may inhibit foliar damage but are slower to kill than conventional contact insecticides. Dead larvae will not move when stimulated and may look darker or desiccated. Unfortunately, extending the bioassay for more than 72 hours usually results in excessively high mortality in the control treatment and is therefore not recommended. 
An assessment is made of the leaf area consumed, ideally using an electronic reader, but when this equipment is not available, a leaf damage scale can be used to evaluate the insecticide activity. The entire leaf disc is considered 100% of the available area. When cut in half, it becomes 50%. If cut again, it's 25% and so on. For example, the first image corresponds to 0% rating in leaf damage. The second image corresponds to 0.5% rating in leaf damage. Images 3 and 4 show foliar discs with approximately 5% and 8% leaf damage rating, respectively. Images 5, 6 and 7 then show 20%, 25% and 30% leaf damage ratings, respectively. Full details of the RAC method 22 for Tuta Absoluta can be located on the RAC website at www.arac-online.org.